away from a brand new Godzilla movie. As you can see, I'm a huge Godzilla nerd and I'm totally ready for this film. This is my most anticipated movie of the summer. Now, I know everyone else out there is very excited about Avengers Endgame and you know what, I, I understand, I get it, but personally, I feel like I've been waiting since I was 10 years old for this movie. This summer's Godzilla King of the Monsters really feels like a big budget remake of Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster and I could not be more happy about it. Now, I'm not sure when exactly I became a Godzilla fan, but I don't know, it just feels like I've always been one, you know? And being back in the 90s, being a Godzilla fan was not easy. I would get strange looks sometimes from other kids who just did not see the appeal. Even my own family, who much preferred King Kong. But I still stayed a huge fan. I would record Godzilla movies when they were marathon on TNT's Monster Vision on Saturday nights, and I would ask my folks to buy them for me on VHS. And I was there convincing myself that the 1998 movie was great. Don't deny it, you did it too. And later on, I would collect all of them on DVDs. I have pretty much seen and consumed pretty much all of the Godzilla media out there. Well, except for that anime. I haven't gotten that one yet. So yes, I'm a huge mark for this franchise. And to get myself in a real good Godzilla mood, I decided to revisit a couple games from my past. First up is Godzilla Monster of Monsters for the NES. Now, look, I understand that there are a lot of Godzilla games out there, a whole bunch, but the games I'm doing here for this review series hold the most nostalgic meaning for me. So, let's get started. I still remember as clear as yesterday when I first beat this game. It was on a Saturday morning, and I woke up early and played it all the way till noon, and when I finally conquered it, it was a great moment for me. And then my mother walked into the room and said, you've been in here for too long, now go outside. In any event, I loved this game as a kid, but as I got older, I kept hearing about how everyone thought this game was bad. Now, I'm not putting any blame on anyone specifically, as we're all entitled to our own opinions, but I think a big reason why was due to some certain internet reviewers. So it made me think, is it really as bad as many people out there are making it out to be? Maybe if I put on my critical hat on, I'll see that it does not live up to my nostalgic feelings. So let's take this one step at a time. This game was released in 1998 in Japan and then the following year in the US. It was developed by Compile and published by Toho themselves. You know, I'm a little nervous about releasing this video because, as we all know, Toe is pretty anal when it comes to Godzilla content on the web. And I'm trying to avoid copyright hammers here. Now, as for the story, we have the aliens from Planet X, who were the bad guys from Invasion of Astro Monster, or Monster Zero, or Godzilla vs. Monster Zero. Why there were so many old Godzilla movies that had so many alternate titles is just beyond me. Anyway, they declare war on Planet Earth because because they're assholes, I, I don't know. They launch a space fleet along with a group of space monsters to take us out once and for all. They are encounters with their monster defenders, Godzilla and Mothra. And so they go to war with the solar system as their battlefield. Now this is a one player game as you control Godzilla and Mothra. Each planet is presented as a grid and functions like a chessboard with you and the enemy taking turns to move your characters along it. In each space there are mountain ranges, jungles, volcanoes, crazy vortexes, cities, and command centers. 
The goal is to wipe out the enemy monsters and capture the enemy headquarters. Godzilla and Mothra each have different abilities. Godzilla can move two spaces along the grid, while Mothra can move four. When you pick where you want to go, you then go to side-scrolling mode, and you move from left to right battling through the spaces that you selected. Now for Big G, he's not very agile at all, but he does have power on his side. He can punch with the A button, kick with the B button, and jump with the up directional key. <sighs> yeah, he does look pretty silly when he jumps and he does not bend his legs, but whatever. He can also do a nice tail whip when you press down and B. If you do it quick enough, you can actually do a jump tail whip, which can be useful, especially in these city areas. Mothra, thanks to her flying abilities, is much more agile as she can dodge and weave. For her main attacks, well, she just has one, this small eye beam I know a lot of people don't like using Mothra in this game. Some just like to kill her off immediately and then just use Godzilla through the entire run. But I never had a problem with her. I like using both monsters in this adventure as they both have their strengths and weaknesses. I don't care what anyone says, Mothra is awesome! During the side scrolling, you'll get everything thrown at you. The enemies have laser cannons, tanks, missile launchers, super X's, evil totem poles, huge doors, whatever the f*** these things are, jets, acrobatic UFOs, even bombers from the top of the screen, good god. Godzilla walks through these attacks, but can destroy them with his punches, kicks, and tail whips, along with obstructions like mountains and the sort. But he can also flinch backwards if he takes a hit that really hurts him. As for Mothra herself, she can be forced down to the far left of the screen, so it is very important to keep an eye on these red capsules that appear randomly when you destroy objects. These things can fill up your energy quite a bit, and you will need them. Because if you take your eye off your health meter, well, your life can get drained pretty quickly, which could lead to an untimely demise. Fortunately, there are times where you'll get aid from friendly vessels that drop beams from the sky that will help destroy enemies or turn into red capsules. So that does help. Though sometimes the friendly ships and enemy ships end up crashing into each other. Each character has two bars, a life bar and a power bar. By pressing the pause button, you can unleash your character's ultimate attack. Now for Godzilla, of course, it is his trademark atomic blast. And for Mothra, it's her poisonous mist. When you use these attacks, the power meter is drained, and it takes a while to refill. For Godzilla, I believe you have to wait until at least a half full before you can make another blast. The enemy monsters can also travel the board by two spaces each. When you run into them, you will have the option to go into battle against them. You can also pick and choose if two of them are touching you at the same time. When the selection is made, you go into battle mode, which is like a fighting game, and each contest has a time limit, which lasts a little over 40 seconds, I believe. If you fail to kill the monster, the next time you engage it, it will have a little more health than last time. The fight keeps going until one of the monster's health is drained or the time runs out. However, the enemy monster has the option to retreat to the next stage if it feels that staying here and fighting would not be to its advantage. That's right, you better run! On Earth, you start off against Gizora and Mogera. Gizora barely does any damage as he just bounces up and down and swipes at you with his tentacle. He's just there to annoy you. Omagra fires a laser beam. When you dispatch the two monsters on the field, you will then move forward to capture the enemy base. In doing so, you will move to the next field. The fields are Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto, Neptune, and finally, Planet X. Some are huge areas, while others are compact pitch battles. Each field will feature the monsters from the last field, and a brand new one. The further you advance in the game, you will start to level up. This increases your health and power, and you'll need them as the enemies will get stronger. Along with Gizora and Medora, you'll have to contend with Varen, Hedora the Smog Monster, Baragon, Gigan, Mecha Godzilla, and finally King Ghidorah. Now I like using certain monsters against certain opponents. For example, it takes a little too long for Mothra to take down Ghizora, so I use Godzilla's breath to take him down quicker. But for Gigan, his buzzsaw can actually give Godzilla some problems, so Mothra's eye beam is the better way to go. Just find the weak spot and avoid his laser blasts. But be warned, the most dangerous being in this game are not the monsters, no. It's this thing. This fireball monstrosity can follow your movements. You'll have to maneuver around and jump up or down to avoid it. Because this thing, when it hits you, hurts and will drain your energy quickly. 
it can be really hazardous early in the game when you're not powered up all the way yet. I swear this thing back in the day put me on the edge of my seat. I knew if I was not careful, it could take me out in a heartbeat. When reaching Planet X, both Mothra and Godzilla should be maxed out. After mowing down all the space monsters and capturing the Planet X headquarters, your adventure comes to an end. With the Earth saved, Godzilla and Mothra return to hibernation, while Planet X sends one final message letting them know that they will be back. Even though we are running away, we are still victorious! Now the visuals in this game I always found to be quite good. All the monster designs are very detailed, or at least as much as they can be for the old 8-bit console, which gives the game a great variety. Yes, I know the complaints about it. Why am I on an alien planet? I want to be crushing buildings, not weird tree monsters. But I, I don't know, I, it just never bothered me personally. I enjoyed the epic nature of it all. Traveling from one planet to another, going to battle in the solar system, it just, it just worked for me. Overall, I find the presentation to be quite strong, along with the sound effects, which includes the roars from the creatures. The music also feels very faithful to Godzilla movies as well, especially the theme songs for the villains. Now this is by no means a perfect game, not by any stretch. The gameplay can get quite repetitive, as many of the stages just have slight alterations, or even just the same ones over and over again. There are a few graphical hiccups here and there, as well as plenty of examples of slowdown when too much stuff is happening on the screen. Another weird thing is that when you're playing as Mothra, when your attacks hit enemy attacks, they can still cause damage to Mothra herself. I never understood that. The time limit can be annoying, sure, but it's still part of the challenge of the game. The layout of it does force you to be more strategic on where you place your monsters and how to attack the obstacles ahead. And I honestly don't find this game to be all that challenging either. It should only take you about a few hours at most to beat it. This is a very niche title for a very particular group of fans, but I'm not saying that non-Godzilla fans still can't enjoy it, but it's primarily for them. But I still don't see why so many others out there consider it to be a bad game. I still enjoy it to today, as much as I did when I was a kid. Godzilla Monster of Monsters is not one of the greatest games for the old Nintendo, but I still feel comfortable in saying that it's still a very underrated one, and definitely one you should check out if you're a fan of Godzilla. Well there you have it, a review of Godzilla Monster of Monsters for the NES. Now make sure to join me next time when I take a look at Super Godzilla for the Super Nintendo. See you then. Hey there everyone, did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff. Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters, links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit chat about the games that we love so much. Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.